Member's statement. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in this House today to speak to an initiative which I believe will significantly increase access to health care services in Muskoka. Earlier this year, a detailed proposal was put forward by the District of Muskoka to establish new nursing stations in communities across Muskoka. In the Ju July session of the Legislature, I had an opportunity to question the Minister of Health on this proposal. He agreed to meet with the Muskoka District Chair and recently followed through on his commitment. I, along with District Chair John Plink, Commissioner of Community Services Rick Williams, Lake of Bays Mayor Bob Young and Muskoka Lakes Mayor Alice Murphy attended the meeting. I am very pleased with Minister Hoskins' decision to give the green light to the Muskoka Nursing Station proposal. In particular, the minister agreed to a three-year demonstration project, including funding for primary care staff and community hubs in Dorset and Port Carling, as well as a new mobile unit to provide service to Port Severn and Severn Bridge, and the reinstatement of nursing support for Wata First Nations. The Ministry of Health is currently working with the local health integration network the district, as well as other relevant agencies, to finalize the details. I'm confident that the process of Im implementing the District of Muskoka proposal has already be begun. With the great success of nursing stations in Perry Sound District and the significant community support that already exists for these nursing stations, it's my strong belief that this lo local project will be very successful. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. The member for London, Fanshawe. Speaker, I would like to direct my statement today to the honourable members of the Liberal Caucus, our government. The people of Ontario have, been, have given you a majority mandate. They have placed their faith and trust in you to deliver on the promises you made, especially given your reassurances that your government is transparent, transparent and accountable to the people of Ontario. As the third-party opposition, New Democrats have the responsibility to hold you and your record to account, and your record isn't good. My staff and I have spoken with countless constituents who come to my office asking what exactly this government is doing with their hard-earned tax dollars, because they want to see your government. They want to see, is your government, because what they want to see is your government failing to deliver on desperately needed funding for crucial services like the Development Services Office, Community Care Access Centres and Mental Health Services. They see Ontario government resources used inappropriately on joint vehicle safety blitzes with the CBSA, resulting in deportations. A lack of transparency there promoted me to write to the Ombudsman requesting a third-party investigation. The people of, of this province need to see their government earn the trust that, you, that they gave you in June. They need to see where their tax dollars are going. They deserve transparency and accountability. They need to know their loved ones will be safe and well cared for in hospitals and long-term care homes, and, their, and that their families can actually afford to live in Ontario. I am asking you now to come through on your promises to the people of Ontario. Thank you. Member statement, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today in the House to recognize a great organization, the Ontario Dental Hygienists Association, whose head office is in my riding of Burlington, and to acknowledge its executive director, Margaret Carter, who is with us today. In honour of Ontario Dental Hygiene Week, I'd like to recognize and thank the 7,000 members of the ODHA for serving our province for over 50 years and thank them for their ongoing commitment to the delivery of primary health care and wellness promotion in our province. Dental hygiene has been recognized and practiced as a profession for over 60 years, and since 1963, the ODHA has been representing the interests and needs of its members. Dental hygienists help clients attain and maintain optimum oral health, as well as prevent periodontal or gum disease and cavities. Thanks to the amendment to the Dental Hygiene Act, where many dental hygienists have established independent practices that often include a mobile component, which allows them to provide services to clients who are in long-term care homes or restricted to their own home, those in rural and remote communities, as well as those who have difficulty traveling to a dentist. With a mounting body of research showing the link between periodontal disease and countless other health conditions, the preventative treatment provided by dental hygienists takes on increasing importance. Mr. Speaker, in these entrepreneurial, it is these entrepreneurial dental hygienists, as well as those working in dental practices, education and public health, that today I ask all members of the House to join me in saluting during Ontario Dental Hygiene Week. Thank you. Here, here.
Thank you. Member statements. The member from Nipissing. Thank you, Speaker. This uh, coming Thursday, Speaker, is Special Olympics Day in North Bay. This takes on an even greater significance this year as Special Olympics Ontario and the North Bay Police uh, services have developed a collaborative partnership to celebrate the Change for Champions campaign. The primary focus uh, for the campaign is to paint North Bay red, Speaker, to create awareness and funds in support of the 2015 Special Olympics Provincial Winter Games, which are being held in North Bay in January of 2015. My hometown will play host to 450 athletes and coaches during the event. Part of this campaign is a red shoelace drive uh, in our city where local individuals, businesses and organizations are encouraged to get on board. All donations will be provided to the Adopt an Athlete program. Special Olympics enriches the lives of people with intellectual abilities through active participation in sport. Special Olympics provides world-class sport opportunities to people with intellectual disabilities daily in communities across the province and in over 160 countries around the world. And Speaker, I want to acknowledge your special role in the Special Olympics as well. I'm pleased that my riding of Nipissing is playing host to this uh, world-class event, and I wish to encourage residents to get involved with the Paint North Bay Red campaign and to benefit these remarkable athletes uh, who, and to support them throughout the Special Olympics. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member from West. Thank you, Speaker. It's always a pleasure to rise in this House to speak on behalf of the people I represent in London West. And today I wanted to share with MPPs an important initiative that has been spearheaded by the London Small Business Centre in my community. The September 2014 employment statistics from StatsCan show a decline in the number of people employed in the London CMA, with many people having given up looking for work because of frustration over the lack of decent opportunities. In this struggling economy, small business ownership provides a possible solution to increase labour market participation among unemployed, underemployed and discouraged workers. To better understand the motivations and barriers to entrepreneurship, as well as awareness of existing supports, an entrepreneurial climate study was commissioned by the London Small Business Centre, working with a cross-sector committee of regional business and economic development organizations. Over 1,500 people from four communities in southwestern Ontario were surveyed, and the results were released to the community last week. The results suggest that entrepreneurship may indeed provide an opportunity to increase increase labour market participation. The report provides rich data to provide a context for next steps in initiating cross-sector collaborations to support entrepreneurship, particularly among those who are in the early stages of considering an entrepreneurial venture, as well as those who are underrepresented or disadvantaged in our labour market. Thank you. Uh, member statements. The member from Ottawa uh, South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to congratulate Tannis Food Distributors, distributors who are celebrating their 75th anniversary this year. A family-owned business founded as Tannis Trading Company on Laurier Avenue by brothers George Nezrella and Tufik Tannis, and later led by Tufik's widow Suad. It has grown from a small cash and carry provider of dry goods to a major food service distributor in eastern Ontario with a full line of dry goods, fresh and frozen products. Moving its base of operations into Ottawa South in 1981, it has more than tripled in size to a 126,000 square foot warehouse. Still family owned and operated, employing 170 people, the company continues to be deeply involved in our community. Through its foundation, Tannis 21, named for Suad and her 21 grandchildren, more than $1 million has been contributed to local hospitals, health facilities, research, and other charities. The family's second generation continues to manage the day-to-day -day operation of the company, and this week they will be hosting their semi-annual food show themed Celebrating Canada. To the Tannis family and all their staff and their families, Congratulations on 75 years of business, best wishes for a great fall food show, and continued success in our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stamis, the member from Leeds-Grenville. Well, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I rise to uh, pay tribute to Ben Tecamp, 
a man whose life set the gold standard by which commitment to community service is measured. Ben held many titles, three-term Brockville mayor, honorary colonel of the Brockville Rifles Regiment, international rowing coach, teacher, husband and father. But to the city of Brockville and the many thousands of lives made better by knowing him, he was simply our beloved Ben. And his death last week at the age of 69 is a tremendous loss for Brockville. The community said its final farewell last Wednesday, when hundreds lined the downtown streets to reflect on Ben's remarkable legacy as the funeral procession passed. Our true character is revealed in tough times, and Ben faced many, whether during his years as mayor or most recently with his health. But no matter the test, Ben's kindness, humility, and relentless optimism that appealed to the best in each of us never waned. His style was quiet, but don't be fooled. Ben was a tremendous leader. Perhaps his finest moment came just a few months into his first term as mayor in 1998 during the ice storm disaster. Ben's reassuring voice on the radio was a source of comfort and lifted our spirits, giving us confidence to get through that crisis. To his wife Kathy, his son Mark, and daughter Robin, I hope the outpouring of genuine love from our community for Ben offers you some comfort in your grief. He'll always have a cherished place in the hearts of those who knew him, and we thank you for letting us share him with you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Uh, is that point of order? Could I ask that it be, can it be held until after statement? Uh, no, we still have other statements. Okay, thank you. Member from Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Since June, I've had the distinct honour of representing the people of Etobicoke Centre in this legislature, and the past few months have left me with an appreciation of the incredible responsibility each of us hold as MPPs, and by extension, underscores the importance of encouraging our constituents to get involved in the democratic process. And I believe, Mr. Speaker, that that involvement has to begin with our youth. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet with the impressive students of Kipling Collegiate Institute right here at the Legislative Assembly. Since their studies commenced this fall, other students from Etobicoke Centre, including from Broad Acres and Transfiguration of Our Lord, have also visited our legislature. And over the last month, I've had the distinct honour of joining students in their classrooms to discuss civics in Ontario at Valley Field Junior School, Transfiguration of Our Lord, and St. Demetrius. After these experiences, I'm looking forward to visiting grade 10 students at Scarlet Heights Entrepreneurial Academy next week. And, and for Kingsway College, Roseway, Eatonville Junior and All Saints schools to visit this legislature in the coming months. What, what has struck me, Mr. Speaker, most in my conversation with these students have been their insightful questions and the breadth of their knowledge about how important it is that we have the right processes to make the right decisions as a province. My conversations with the students of Etobicoke Centre leave me with great hope for what governments of the future can and will achieve in Ontario under these future leaders. I thank each of these students for their visits, for their invitations to join them in their classroom, and for their dedication to the democratic health of Ontario for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, since I was elected as the member for Davenport in June, I've had the pleasure to greet a number of school groups for my riding at the Legislature. For me, these visits have been a rewarding part of my new job as an MPP. It's always a treat to speak to the young people about the work we do here at Queen's Park and the importance of public service. I was very disappointed then that I could not meet a group of students from Dusan Street Junior Public School when they visited on Friday. As you know, Mr. Speaker, members of the Liberal Caucus were in Windsor for a provincial council. Dusan is a wonderful school in Davenport, located near the co corner of College and Ossington. It boasts an active parent community and a dedicated faculty. Students at Dusan are high achievers, consistently scoring above the provincial averages on EQAO assessments. I hope that I'll have the opportunity to show students and parents from Dusan around the legislature on another occasion. Thank you. The member from Windsor to Pumsey on a point of order. On a point of order, thank you, Speaker. And with your indulgence, if I could introduce a friend from Windsor who was here, Charlie Hotham, the president of Hotham Building Supplies, is the president of the Windsor Construction Association, and he's here to invite you all to attend the reception at 5 o'clock in the dining room with the Construction Association of Ontario. Charlie Hotham, welcome to the legislature. 
Mr. Mel Goldman, Manitoulin, on a point of order. Yes, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this today, uh, Mr. Speaker. Is although he's not here present, he's here in my heart, and that's my son, Mathieu Mato, whose his birthday is 19 years old today. I wish him a very safe day. <laughs> These are the kinds of points of orders that make me smile. <laughs> But anyway, I want to thank all members for their statements. I point out a uh, special uh, notice of the, the member from Nipissing uh, made reference. Uh, for those that do not know, I'm on the Bo Ontario Board of Special Olympics Ontario, and I will be making available in support of our games in uh, North Bay through the member uh, the red shoelaces that are uh, symbolic of uh, Special Olympics Ontario, and I would encourage all of you to get involved locally. Uh, and uh, pay them a visit. They're the, one of the best examples of athletes I've ever seen in my life. Here, here. So thank you. <laughs> I beg to